The nervous system is comprised of the central and peripheral nervous systems. This classification may be of more value when studying anatomical, physiological and pathological elements. But in a clinical setting, it may not be clear whether a lesion or dysfunction is related to central or peripheral nervous systems or of a disseminated nature. This may be established when sufficient information is obtained or on examination. It is best to approach the case history by considering signs and symptoms from the nervous system as a whole. Take into consideration all the structures of this system, including the cerebrum, cerebellum, basal ganglia, brainstem, spinal cord, plexi, peripheral nerves and ganglia, and their supply to their effector structures. In particular, when referring to the spinal cord, keep in mind the distinctions between the pyramidal and extrapyramidal tracts, the ascending tracts like the posterior columns and spinothalamic tracts, and the spinal cerebellar tracts. Also, consider the autonomic nervous systems and associated ganglia. When investigating a suspect neurological presentation, consider whether this is a primary neurological condition or secondary, for instance, from an endocrine or neoplastic pathology. Another useful way of classifying neurological conditions is to identify whether you are dealing with an organic or functional condition. However, in some cases, these boundaries may become blurred. A functional disorder like anxiety leading to hyperventilation may cause paresthesia and weakness. Yet another way to help you focus your case history inquiry into a suspect neurological presentation is whether you can classify their presenting complaint as loss of sensation, loss of motor function, mixed, that is both sensory and motor, autonomic, like secretomotor effects, associated with cranial nerves, or psychoemotional or cognitive. However, evaluating neurological presentations, especially attempting to isolate the structures responsible, can be a taxing challenge for the non-specialist. Remember that the information gathered in the case history must be good enough to direct and focus your subsequent clinical examination in order to elicit objective physical findings. When inquiring into a patient's neurological condition, ask what is the exact nature of the symptoms? Are they primarily that of pain, loss of motor function, loss of sensation, or a combination? Were they acute or gradual in onset? Do they relate to a trauma of some kind, or have they arisen without apparent cause? Are the symptoms stable in severity or getting worse? Are they of a remitting and relapsing nature? And if so, is each new episode the same or more severe? Do the symptoms affect a particular limb or region of the body, or are they disseminated? And is this pattern consistent or variable in time and distribution? It is for you as the clinician to then discern whether these symptoms conform to recognizable patterns, that is, dermatomal and myotomal in distribution relating to specific nerve roots or of a wider territory like that of peripheral nerve distribution. Inquiring about family history is of particular importance when evaluating neurological presentations as there is evidence of genetic predisposition to conditions such as mental illness, Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, cerebrovascular disease, motor neuron disease, Huntington's disease, Alzheimer's disease, hereditary neuropathies, and many others. For additional analysis on neurological presentations, please refer to the relevant slideshow. Here are some key questions which you need to consider when investigating a suspect neurological presentation. If the patient complains of headaches, the following questions need to be asked. Are the headaches a recent phenomenon or long-standing? Are they localized unilaterally, bilaterally, or does their position fluctuate? What is the frequency, intensity, and duration? 
Are there any other associated manifestations such as visual disturbances, nausea, sensory or motor changes? Is the headache aggravated by head movements, coughing or sneezing? Does the patient wake with a headache? Have they had any fits, faints or blackouts? Are the headaches preceded by prodromal manifestations or other warnings? Are there any identifiable triggers? Does the patient ever feel dizzy or experience a sense of rotation as if the room is spinning as in vertigo? If so, what triggers this sensation? Is it position dependent, constant or intermittent? Are there any associated symptoms such as nausea? Does the patient experience persistent numbness or pins and needles, especially in the face or in the extremities? In addition to headaches, other inquiries relating to the nervous systems include the following. Does the patient suffer from muscle weakness? Is this confined to a particular muscle, to a type of movement, affecting a whole limb, one side of the body, or is it generalized? Is their weakness stable, improving or getting worse? Is the involved area affected by sensory changes? Do they suffer from frequent muscle spasms or cramps? Do they have poor coordination or trouble with walking and balance? Do they suffer from tremor? Is this evident at rest or on intention? If you have reasons to believe that the patient's symptoms relate to the cranial nerves, ensure that you inquire about their sense of smell, vision, hearing and taste. Has the patient had any history of strokes or major head injuries? Is there any evidence of memory impairment? Has the patient had any recent investigations for possible endocrine disorders, including thyroid and parathyroid conditions or diabetes? Ascertain what medications they are taking and how much alcohol they might be consuming. Red flags for the nervous systems include disturbances with smell, vision, hearing and taste, dizziness and vertigo, dysarthria, hoarseness and dysphonia, dysphagia, fainting or loss of consciousness, persistent paresthesia or numbness, reflex changes, loss of sphincter control, muscles with persistent fasciculations, weakness, wasting and spasms, paralysis, history of psychiatric disorders including clinical depression and mania. Red flags relating to headaches, headaches that are worse at night or wake the patient up, history of head trauma, high blood pressure or cerebrovascular accidents, history of glaucoma, temporoarteritis and aneurysms, and cranial nerve dysfunction.